Hello World Civilizations class, Mr. Lasseter with you and we're going to continue with our study of the scientific revolution as we look at the science of astronomy and advances made in the understanding of, that we have of the universe during this time period. Uh, and we'll also look at these video goals. What did astronomy look like before the scientific revolution and then what exactly changed in our understanding of the universe as a result of this scientific revolution. And then also, how did this new understanding of the universe challenge established authorities, especially religious authorities? So you're going to have to listen to me because I'm going to explain uh, that in a little bit more detail uh, verbally than you might see in the notes. Make sure you get your vocabulary and uh, identify some of the people here. You might recognize Copernicus, Kepler, Galileo, or Sir Isaac Newton uh, from your project that you're working on. So some of you might get a little help out of this video. Let's get started. Astronomy is the branch of science that deals with the heavens, celestial objects, space, uh, the physical universe as a whole. Um, and the discoveries in astronomy that uh, occur during the scientific revolution are going to become some of the most important of this scientific revolution. The Western view of the universe would change completely as a result of this. Even the image to the right, which uh, you've seen from Mr. Guilford already in one of your videos, kind of shows humans breaking out of this old model of the universe and seeing firsthand uh, what the universe is really like. It's a great, great image. really represents the scientific revolution and especially the study of astronomy. So let's get into this. Let's find out uh, exactly what changed with astronomy and and why it was so impactful. So the old way of viewing the universe uh, comes really from this guy Ptolemy. Um, the Ptolemaic system uh, was an idea that had been around since antiquity. Ptolemy lived uh, you know during the first and second centuries uh, CE in the Common Era. And in combination of Ptolemy's ideas as well as Aristotle and Christian thinkers and people who interpreted the Bible, people of the Middle Ages simply believed that the earth was the center of the universe. And this makes perfect sense. You wake up in the morning, you're sleep, you know, from all eternity, you know, you, you even back in kind of the nomadic days, you wake up in the morning, you, you're looking at the sky and the, the sun's on one side and as the day goes on, the sun appears to move in the sky while you feel like you're staying still. Um, so this is a, a very easy to understand observation that people are making. And this theory became known as the geocentric theory. Geo meaning, uh, of course, Earth. So Earth-centered theory. Um, and it asserted that the planets... The sun, the stars, and the heavens all surrounded the earth in concentric circles. As you see here on this uh, image, with the earth at the center, the moon, Mercury, Venus, the sun, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, all circling the earth, and then fixed stars in the sky in this outer ring. Uh, beyond that, that was the sphere of the prime mover, or God. Basically, though, that is heaven. That was the uh, eternal reward if you were a good Christian uh, for Europeans. This model is not going to stand up because it's going to have some problems. And But let's look at this beautiful image of the to Ptolemaic model of the universe. Notice the idea the Earth is at the center surrounded by uh, Luna or the Moon, Mercury, Venus, the Sun, Mars, Jupiter, etc. Um, but if you take a look at what is on the outside of this, we have angels surrounding uh, this universe and uh, the image of Jesus and God um, kind of in that outermost ring. It's going to become a little complicated, so stick with me as we go through this. Um, but the Ptolemaic model gets pretty complicated because people started noticing things in the heavens. For example, something called retrograde, where it would appear that planets would actually... Uh, go backwards through the sky, which doesn't make much sense uh, in terms of if they're circling the Earth or orbiting around the Earth. So we're going to look at that in a second, because there was one guy who really thought that uh, the fix to this problem, which was 
kind of smaller orbits within larger orbits. He thought that was too complicated. Uh, and so he looked for another solution. And his name was Nicholas Copernicus. Um, basically in 1543, he publishes a book challenging this geocentric model. He just thought that geocentric model became way too complicated when trying to prove kind of small things that were going on uh, in, uh, in space, in the universe. Uh, so instead he developed a model based on the idea that the sun was the center of the universe and that the planets revolved around the sun and even that the moon revolved around the earth. Uh, and to make the things even kind of more crazy, the Earth actually rotates on its axis and turns, which is what makes the Sun appear to revolve around the Earth. So he kind of had hammered out a lot of these issues. Um, the heliocentric theory certainly was more accurate, even though we know it's not 100% correct because the Sun is not the center of the entire universe. Um, our galaxy isn't even the center of that universe. So, um, but Copernicus puts this model forward in the late 1500s, and it's going to create a huge change. Now let's take a look, a brief look at um, exactly why he came to this realization. So this is the idea of retrograde, and this is Mars coming across the night sky in 1997. Basically, Mars followed this line. Um, in the sky, and if you followed it every night, it would appear that Mars was kind of moving from right to left across the night sky. And then it makes this retrograde. It appears to move backwards, if you're following my mouse. And it moves backwards for a week or two, and then continues on. Now, how do we explain that under the, uh, the geocentric model? Well, it was explained with kind of smaller orbits. Earth stayed in the center of the universe, and Mars uh, kind of went around its orbit around Earth, but then it kind of had this smaller circular orbit itself. And so the line that Mars would follow would appear to go backwards and forwards. Very plausible, very uh, kind of mathematic, scientific idea of, of why retrograde might occur. However, it gets very complicated if you think all the planets have these motions and there are a lot more kind of very small movements of the planets that couldn't be explained. So the heliocentric theory, or the Copernican theory, uh, came up with a different system. Um, and it's basically the idea that both Earth and Mars move around the Sun, but possibly at different uh, rates. And therefore, depending on where the Earth was and where Mars was, it appears that Mars, Mars kind of moves backwards in the night sky, even though it does not actually. Um, of course, this is a more correct version or way of seeing uh, retrograde. But why am I talking about this and doing all this kind of science and astronomy? Basically to get an idea of why he even wanted to challenge this idea of the geocentric model. He saw something, he used reason, he used experimentation, he used his observation, and he used mathematics to prove that his system was more correct. Source for these uh, images are at the bottom. Feel free to go to that website if you'd like uh, and read up a little bit more on it. So this brings us to kind of step two with the heliocentric theory. Uh, Copernicus had basically determined that the sun, not the earth, was the center of, of the universe. And a German mathematician uh, sought to kind of do a little bit more with this model. And so he used astronomical data, and being a mathematician, he created uh, laws of planetary motion, or more accurately discovered some laws of planetary motion. Basically, he used math to confirm that the Sun was the center of the universe and also he discovered that the orbits of the planets weren't perfectly circular like the geocentric theory thought or like Copernicus thought but they were actually elliptical which you can see uh, in the image at the bottom there um, so there you go that's Johann Kepler of course things get super interesting when 
uh, a guy named Galileo Galilei, uh, a mathematician and astronomer, becomes extremely famous for publishing works about the heliocentric universe. He simply becomes extremely famous because uh, he makes he's the first to make regular astronomical observations through this invention called a telescope, which allowed uh, Galileo to have kind of up close views of these celestial objects. And basically what he discovered was that these heavenly bodies aren't just kind of giant orbs of light that God has hung in the night sky, but that they're actually physical material substances just like Earth, and they have mountains, and they have other moons, uh, and they have craters, and they have all sorts of features, uh, just like the Earth has. Um, and that the sun has sunspots on it, and that uh, there are things going on in the universe that uh, simply can't be explained just by, or, or need a better explanation, rather than just God hung this light in the night sky. So he publishes his uh, book, his discoveries in 1610, and gains fame throughout Europe. Um, becomes probably the most famous of these, even though it's Copernican model, Galileo's uh, observations and drawings of, of what happens in the universe kind of become extremely, extremely popular. But certainly not everyone is going to appreciate these discoveries, especially the Catholic Church in Europe, which, although its power had been fading, was still uh, very powerful in, in Italy. So, why was the Catholic Church so scared of these ideas? Well, first and foremost, in the Ptolemaic model, the universe is surrounded by heaven and by God. Um, and if Earth is at the center where, where humans live, then it occupies a special place in, in this universe. God's on one side of the universe and humans are at the center because they are so special. Um, and if humans are not at the center of this universe, well then, we're not quite as special uh, as, as we may have thought. And if the universe perhaps goes on forever or doesn't take the form we think it does, well perhaps God's place in the universe is being challenged. So, fearing that these new discoveries contradicted the Bible or Catholic tradition and teaching, the Catholic Church forced Galileo to reject the Copernican view of the universe and, in fact, even reject his own, uh, his own discoveries. Under duress, Galileo does recant his claims in 1633. Um, even though by the 1630s, 1640s, most astronomers accepted the heliocentric model of the universe, this most famous of, of all these astronomers is forced uh, to, to deny what, what he had discovered. Um, according to some biographies of Galileo, Galileo he is said after recanting to utter the words, and yet it moves, and kind of defiance of the fact uh, that he was being forced to do this, because the earth, regardless of what he had to say, still moved around the sun. But we're not done yet, because there was one more problem that remained in this understanding of the universe. Yes, the sun might be at the center. Yes, the planets might orbit the sun. And yes, they might move in elliptical uh, orbits. But why do they move as they do? You know, what was the force making them move? Um, and that is really discovered by Isaac Newton, who you see pictured here, who is a mathematician from England at the University of Cambridge who discovered, you might want to say, or developed the universal law of gravitation. Basically, this law explained planetary motion, elliptical orbits, astronomical forces of attraction, and why, if you throw a ball in the air, it comes back down to the ground. Um, ultimately, uh, by developing this law of gravity and law of gravitation, uh, Sir Isaac Newton uh, kind of put in place a way to understand why things move as they do, and therefore uh, kind of put a nail in, in the idea of this, you know, prime mover that was in the Ptolemaic model. Um, this view of the universe would stand, basically it stands until modern times, until the 20th century when Albert Einstein comes along and once again revolutionizes, revolutionizes the idea of the universe. And, and what it is like. 
Of course, there are many discoveries along the way, but the ones we've looked at today are are the very biggest, I think. Um, so make sure you can answer these questions. We looked at the Ptolemaic model before the scientific revolution, changes in the Copernican model and with Galileo, uh, and how uh, the church, the Catholic Church, and the old guard, so to speak, felt threatened by these new these new discoveries. Make sure you understand the vocabulary. You can get these people in your digital notebook. Um, and other than that, have a good day.